That's that's how you're gonna start. Yep. You're leading in with new. new. Well, that's how I'm feeling. That's actually how the week's been for most of both it's of us. Been about three weeks of that. I've been putting out fires left and right. And I am a fireman at this point, based on how many firemen. <laughs> I should work in fire. construction with the amount of pipe I have to lay. <laughs> Uh, no, it's true though. Like today or, uh, yesterday and today we had one machine in, a, in my job. Oh, so you've been, you've been putting out actual fires. I'm putting out metaphorical no, well, fires. No, I'm saying both metaphorical and, and actual fires. Now one of the machines literally broke in half randomly. I, I quite literally broke in half. <laughs> and then the other today, the guys call me and some idiot on the actual construction side, different crew, completely different from our company or whatever, hit our trailer with our machine on it. He claims it like 25 miles an hour. No. No. <laughs> There's no way. I do not Because he totaled his car. Cut scene. He's smelling your vehicle. He thinks it smells like... I don't know what. I don't remember this cut scene, so... Uh... Okay. Uh, those who have been watching on the video, I guess, know what's up, because we don't. Oh, I'm not even That's moving you. it. Now you know I thought that the plight. wired controller would work. You well, the other that. batteries aren't even working at all, so, I mean, I have to go with the wired, but... I'm just saying now you know my plight, because I was on that other one the other day. And Were you? Stuck. No? Fine. Do you want my pity? Okay. I'm not even moving it's the problem. <laughs> oh, the the the... No, that is you. No, it's not. Ah, it is me this time. So the that batteries, comment. man. What do you? Wired doesn't work, and I probably just need new ones. These are all real old. Batteries don't work. Neither do the wires. Out of uh, the battery into the wire. So, uh, anyway, then this guy had to have been doing at least like forty in this construction zone and totaled his car. But also, then it took like three hours to pull his car away from our trailer. <laughs> And then ruined our other machine, too, so it's really fun. Um, anyway, yeah. But no, I mean, it it's bothersome when you have wasted significant amount of time in various other fields only to find out that you could have been making ridiculous money doing something that you wouldn't well, have imagined. Well, you probably could have made been. decent cash at the sales job if you had stuck with it. Yes, you but probably it's would interesting. Have made you Not some as much kind as of manager than you think. Well, sure, but I mean, the thing is, with those kinds of jobs, well, they're commission based. Uh, That's you again. I mean, is it okay? Hang on. Is it? Is it the batteries themselves? Is it doing the battery flash dance, or is it? No. So that just means it's the the housing is getting jostled. Yeah, that's probably true. So we just need new ones. Uh, We've got fresh batteries and everything, but that doesn't make them work. That okay. okay, this is not swap it out. Maybe put those batteries in the carriage for this one. I thought we had attempted to figure out that this is the carriage that was bad, but or actually, these batteries are also fresh. We uh, don't care anymore, if you can't tell, <laughs> as evidenced by the fact that we're like two weeks behind on these. Well, okay, not, it's not, not even that, and that's not even everyone, anyone else's fault. I, we have some raw material to use, it's just I haven't edited it because I've been so busy. So I think, yeah, that was the carriage that doesn't work. Here, maybe try putting that carriage in this and maybe see if it just is a matter of the controller or the carriage or whatever. I don't even know what the, we, these weird battery sacks are called. Battery sack. I'm pretty sure that's the actual official name, battery sack. I don't know, man. We just can't have stuff that works anymore, can we? Bat that's the sack. nature of the country and of life. Uh... Well, End of your prostate when you get old. <laughs> wow. Um, all I well, okay, I thought these floors were glass. All I, know. I thought there was glass there. I didn't realize it was an open pit. That uh, is some tactical donk. Uh, all I know is... Back up against the wall again. You, Woo! You'd think... <laughs> so within the sales job that I worked where I was actually working like with... Well, is it a commission suit, thing where it's like you don't make a lot but the commissions are high or something? No, it was, it was not commission, but uh, the fact that I was in a three-piece suit maybe made it seem like I was making a lot of money, but I actually was yeah, making probably sales is... three or like maybe a quarter less what I make now. So it's well, like... A quarter less or a quarter of? Like a quarter of. I've seen me, oh, I mean, it's the same, though. I almost said me. No, 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 no. Mathematically, those are different. No. A quarter less a quarter means minus 20. Is... No, a quarter less means you're making 33 quarters of the total. 
If you're making a quarter of, that means you're making a quarter. Quarter. What? You, what? If you're making a quarter less, because think about it, it's for every dollar you're making less one a quarter less. Right. You're making three quarters instead of right. four. That's three quarters of the amount. If you're saying I'm making a. If you're saying I'm making a quarter of what I was making, that means no, no, you're no, literally. No, I'm saying I, in sales I was making probably three quarters. Okay, so you'd be making what I'm making. Whereas now I'm working and making good money <laughs> without without really... You well, know, the trades is where it's at. It's true. And you be useful to society and make money for doing it. It's almost like that's what money is for. It's almost like it's something you do for... Something you get for being useful to people. Uh, I do know this. The medieval people knew this. Well, that is certainly a fact. He that uh, shall not work shall not eat. And I think Paul, what Paul meant by that is he who is of no use to society doesn't eat. Because <laughs> that's the thing is most jobs that people work today would be totally useless in any, in any kind of crisis. Well, that's true. It's like, oh, I know a lot about Excel. Okay. Great. That would be awesome if the internet and the computers were working. Do you know how to fix a tractor? Do you know how to... I mean, that's not to say that you know, unless it's manual labor, it's useless. Because there are valid. Well, I mean, I'm uh, intellectual mine is not. Oh, suits. Okay. Hi, fellas. Mine is not uh, manual labor at all. I manage people, but at the same time, I'm in that field of labor that requires, yes, uh, logistics and kind of planning and things of that nature. But it's still not useless. It's like all the things I do. If oh, not done, could have oh. like the 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 kind of oh, you didn't tell me you were meeting waiting with on me. cities and planning on you know hey I have to meet with this particular person in order to make sure I get this approval or whatever else. All those kinds of things are what keeps the organizational infrastructure in place. <laughs> and I think even on a fallout level, if something were to hit the fan, well, you would have to have some people level skills of, are transferable always. Right, exactly. Nope. Okay. Uh, we're sticking with we're going yeah I, f I feel like we're settling into an old groove. Of this is what? what it, well, this is this is how everything started before we even had any reason to record these. It was Halo and things like it. No, oh, he's got a sword, and I don't have any grenades. I'm about to not have any nads. <laughs> He's took my ads. Well, I just thought you put the emphasis on AIDS intentionally. I'm about to get AIDS! Well, not without NADS, I'm not. I don't think you need NADS in order to receive AIDS. Probably needed to give it. I'm sorry, that was far more graphic than I meant it to be. Well, okay, well, no. It's obvious if only of the fact that I'm pretty sure women can get AIDS, too. <laughs> okay, but no, that's not what I... Okay. Well, okay, so there is glass, but it breaks. Ah, ah! Get out of here! Anyway, um, <sighs> yeah, uh, I enjoy the fact that I'm in the trades now. I mean, I don't. I think a part of it, as much as yes, the what you make is nice. The other part of it is it makes you feel a little bit more like you actually That's what I was are saying, contributingly dignity. useful. <laughs> yeah, dignity of that of you know. Because the funny, the thing is, there's a an a we're in the age of self awareness where you'll see the there's TikToks. I mean, and that's all that alone is part of the problem. But well, of the guys who are like, oh, I work, problem, I work some too. dumb office job, and I'm and you know, I was at the I was at this place, and I walk by these construction guys, and I'm like, my job is totally useless. Well, and I'm like, true. it's good that you're recognizing this, but they pass it off like it's a joke. And I'm like, are you gonna do something about it then, or? Is this just clout for you? Yeah. It's like, see, I'm not one of the bad ones because I know I'm useless. It's like, mm, sorry. That ain't gonna... You ain't getting food to hear, pal, just because you know you're useless. <laughs> Get on the farm. Well, and it's hardly like they're... Like, I, I suppose if I can borrow the... the eh, there's an Bioshock attitude. At least there was one concept. There was they're one particular like video that I found or, really... Or what are they called? Uh, what does he call them? Uh, parasites. Parasites. They're hardly parasites. Yeah, but they but are, like, though, because the parasite that knows it's useless doesn't make it less of a parasite. Well, okay, but they are contributing something. No, whether a, paras or not a parasite literally doesn't... 
No, I'm not. I'm not talking about parasites contributing to something. I'm saying like something like an office job. You may not like the fact that on a commerce level it is somewhat necessary right now, but it is. No, it isn't. I mean, well, as again, evidenced by Twitter, could... okay, he hired, yes. he fired eighty percent of the staff, and it's still working just fine. It's like it just goes to show, most office jobs are useless. Woo! Aha! I got him. So I'm just saying that, and maybe it's not all. For uh, the, all of you that work office the one jobs, video, we're not sorry. I used to work an office job. I used to work in accounting, and I didn't. I mean, I guess I was useful to that one specific company well, that's primarily because saying. I was their only bookkeeper. <laughs> so I mean, I guess I was of some utility, but I mean that wasn't on a grand scale. That wasn't a thing that. Well, mattered. that but that's all I'm saying. On a microcosm, you have some use, but it's not. It's only because yeah, but do someone people has in human, you useful. But do people in HR have use? Well, I, I don't think they do. That's an interesting evaluation. Mm. I um. The people whose jobs is busybodying. Well, it's not even that. It's to solve other people's problems that uh, can't interpersonal disputes, which they should have enough to actually just get. Yeah, them guess done what? Them. Those that's the answer is fire them. Well, that I don't disagree. But again, they won't even let you do you that these days. You invisible. Is there an invisible piece? guy? Yes, he is, and he's about to be over here giving me AIDS. I don't. Oh, I see him. I'm out of ammo. He's a he's giving me AIDS! I'm out found of ammo! He's ready to give me AIDS. There we go, I'm back. Where is he? <laughs> Get away! I Get got him. No your AIDS, AIDS today. Right now, come on. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's all it's worse because it almost rhymes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear. Okay. Uh, uh, anyway, I would be a remiss. I would be a uh, 18th 1800s uh, industrialist if I had the capacity. I'd just be like, "Oh, you're going on strike. Okay, every one of you's fired." <laughs> okay. Well, is there a reason you're still here? Are you still? Is there still fighting? I'm trying to move ahead. Oh, I hear that. Whatever it is. Ah, uh, oh, where are you at? I don't. Keep they're up shooting. above. They're in the trees. They were. There we go. Ah, there's still more. There we go. Well. Okay, they keep coming. Why aren't you shooting him? Alrighty, now I think we can go forward. Well. Yeah. We're I, tired uh, and bitter. Well, I'm tired. I don't know that I'm bitter right this I'm moment. I'm not bitter. I'm a little bit bitter. <laughs> I'm not bitter. I'm a little bit bitter. <laughs> it's like Earl Grey tea. I'm tired in multiple senses. Tired physically and tired mentally and socially. And grammatically, apparently. Economically. <laughs> ecumenically. That's <laughs> well, not, that's that, not even untrue, like, even. <laughs> ecumenically, I feel like we're all tired. <laughs> Protestantism was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> well. Let's launch into that. I don't think that people give the Catholic Church enough credit. <laughs> and that's not to say the Catholic Church has done great things. That's to say that the ecumenism of the Catholic Church is arguably the most long-standing. Obviously. And, and I think those that downplay that or act like, ah, but those Catholics, they're hardly even saved anymore, are just people that want to excuse the fact that they walked away <laughs> because that seems a bit cynical but no it because no, the most of the people who say that are protestants well i okay <laughs> so you're saying well now you're making the opposite claim that protestants aren't saved no i'm not saying they're not saved i'm just saying in order to excuse the fact Here's that the, yeah. they're oh goodness Hello. They it's a party over to, there coming big party coming. 
Big party, where? Where? It's Are it's over. Balloons? It's over. <laughs> it's it's over because you shut up. Wow, party <laughs> equals very no. <laughs> Drop a train on them. By a train, I mean your left testicle. <laughs> Wow, I can't tell whether that was a compliment or not, but the fact that my left testicle is a train is pretty impressive. Uh, boy. Uh, um, at any rate, <laughs> on, a, on a related note, uh, Protestantism is a testicle. I was playing. I was going to say on a related note, uh, how about that Martin Luther? Hey, you got. <laughs> Where did Does he, go? he have a massive testicle too? <laughs> he had some amount of gonads. <laughs> um, well, see, here's the thing, and here, I feel here's like my is, here's my main criticism. Can I, well, hang on, can Martin I say, Luther wouldn't like modern Protestants. Well, that's what I was about to say. So, can I just say I think not just in strictly this sense as far as this religious topic, but also across the board historically, why is it that we have this revisionism? when it comes to historic figures that end up completely maligning what? their actual intent or character. Uh, because other people thought it was useful to use them that way. 100%. They There's become... actually, it's the same guys as the, uh, I forget the name of the channel, but the, the, the Irish leprechaun, the, the... That's Moldavism. Yeah, those guys. Patrick. They have uh, a whole oh, yeah, video yeah, about... Uh, 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 Lutheran satire. Yeah, and it, oh, is that the, yeah, of course, that's the name of the channel. Uh, but they had a whole thing about, like, all of the other Protestants, like Zwingli and Calvin and, uh, to a lesser extent, Henry VIII, being like, oh, you know, thank you, Martin, Mr. Luther, for, you know, paving the way for us to rebel against the Catholic Church. He's like, hang on, that's not what I... Yeah, that's, that's not what I was trying to do. Was. Sure it was. It's like, oh, and they have this whole little song and dance where it's like, who cares about the real presence? He's like, God cares about these things. <laughs> Because that's the thing. Most people, if they knew what Martin Luther believed, they'd be like, oh, so he was a Catholic. Oh, wait. I forgot to show you this meme. It was literally a meme that said it well, was a quote from John chapter 6 that literally talks about, like, my butt blood. Uh, Your blood butt? Is, my blood is actually the blood. And my, my like, it was basically transubstantiation. Yeah. But literally it was like the Catholic. It was like Catholics reading this. And it was like Protestants reading this. It was like. <laughs> oh, you've done it again. But it's like it it's true. It was it was So hang on, so you're saying you now do believe in the Eucharist. Okay. First of all, <laughs> let's clarify. <laughs> Never once did I have a problem with the Eucharist. You acted like no, it's probably not Transubstantiation has been something that I've always wrestled with, but I never once, A, took an actual stance on this, nor did I ever say the Eucharist was something I did not believe in. Well, no, but there's a reason why Protestants don't use the term Eucharist, is because oh, they just call it, well, we just call it communion. Within, no, within theology, we still call it the Eucharist. Well, okay. Because um, the thing is, if you look at the Greek, it does, like, the actual, the Greek, this is why I like ancient languages, is they're highly specific. Well, yeah. So it's like, they're not, when it says my blood and my body, it's like, these are the Greek words for blood and body, not, you know, English has a unique propensity for having words not mean what they mean. Most other languages didn't put up with that. Which is interesting, given your opinion on uh, certain parts of, hang on. other parts of the was Bible. This was this before that they less, would let you, was this before they... Less li linear in black and white. What? I'm I'm just I'm simply making I'm commenting on ancient language. I don't know what you're talking about in terms of Well, I'm just saying like within the context of Genesis for instance, obviously being a, that it is narrative. Okay, but I'm speaking linguistically as in words having definite and very specific meanings. I'm not saying the construction of those words meaning a literal thing. That's a different because I'm saying I suppose that is a different Because the idea. argument could be just simply because the words in Genesis mean these specific things doesn't mean that the point of Genesis as a book was those individual exact words. Well, I suppose that's... Yeah. That's what I'm saying. When Paul specifically writes, because that's the passage you're talking about, when Paul says, you know, he who has not consumed the blood, he's not saying that metaphorically because Greek language... Well, I'm not enough of an expert on Greek. I know much more... Latin's a little bit more strict about, like, metaphors being a bit... No, no. It's like, no, we have a different word for that. If you mean blood but not physical blood, it's a different word. Whereas if you mean this word, it's like biological blood and that's it. 
All I there's know like eight that... different words for murder in Greek. Some of them are in Latin. Some of them depending on the method involved. It's like if you kill someone with a sword, that's a different kind of murder than if you kill them with your bare hands. He didn't kill. Whereas him. there is also he a killed him. there's also a word for murder, which is just sort of general killing with any implement. So it's like, is there one for like manslaughter where it's like probably, I accidentally killed him? There probably was. Like there actually is. In fact, I know for sure there's a difference between malicious murder and like accidental murder or killing that was not like deliberate. So it's yeah, now I, I don't know about Greek. Maybe the Greek you could argue it's like no, I they would like have used blood as a more metaphorical languages, term. Like why is it that English almost got so specific that it actually became less? Effective. Because it absorbs a bunch of other languages is probably why. Well, but, but like, like for instance, uh, Spanish is far more... Oh. So is uh, this before they had the, the board enemy air, uh, vehicle mechanic? Uh, this is Spanish the first game. Spanish is far more precise as far as the well, so is Latin. kind of... Well, that, I mean, it's a romance language, obviously. Well, the thing, reason English isn't precise is because we've adopted words from, like, eight different languages. Well, but it's, it's why we have to use words that are modifiers like very... Well, you don't have to. There are well, English, but I'm there saying are like English words that... Maybe I should say, I suppose, it's why it's overly used and why I think I have then rededicated my mental space to saying, I want to use... Well, that's the why I words. like highly it's, specific words. Well, yeah, exactly. It Precision to me in a word or in a it's sentence like the word defenestrate, better. meaning to throw someone out of a window. It's like, I love that there's a word for that. Or the well, word incarnadine, which means to turn something red. I'm like, that's oddly specific. Do you need that word? You could just say it turns something red. But the fact that there is a word for it, it's like, I like that. Are you are you keeping up or what? With what? <laughs> well, sure. Oh, With me, I guess is what I mean. I'm not. I'm not keeping. I'm not keeping a credit system here. So. Well, I'm not specifically keeping track, to be honest, of what you were doing. <laughs> uh, I can't remember how it goes. Now. Uh, the fact of the matter is, the frog is a great deal more interesting to look at, and uh, who notices what the bearded man is doing? <laughs> uh, if you haven't seen that, everyone should. It's called The World of Jim Henson. It's a documentary that was made in like the '90s, shortly after he died. About him and his work, and it's great. That man was far more brilliant than people give him credit. I feel like people give him reason about him credit. He's yeah, not usually included in the sort of trio of wholesome uh, early television uncle well, characters. Well, because I don't know that he was generally speaking, specifically wholesome. He was, ah, yes. His characters may have been wholesome, he, but no, Jim but Henson People talk as a about him being a pretty. Not... Yeah, you got hit by the thing. People talk about him as having been a pretty uh, wholesome guy. I mean, he was not—he was not like a Puritan, certainly. But I mean, that, but that, but he had a good thing too. Well, yeah, he was this well, close but, to losing his salvation. Well, because no, but um, I mean, like that's a—it's not terribly interesting to be puritanical. No, I there's a—he had an element because people describing in the even the, in this documentary they talk about how he was not. Uh, you know, this sort of saintly, pious... Like, he definitely had a sense of humor that could skew dark at times. But well, in some ways, that's what makes it... A problem with. That's what I... makes uh, the Muppets funny, is that they were occasionally actually... They were willing to sort of skirt the edges of being quote-unquote edgy. And it's like that... When you, when you know how to thread that needle, that actually gives you the best of both worlds. Sure. Boy... So this, I do think, is before Halo had the iconic capture an enemy vehicle mechanic. Because, like, normally I'd be able to get up close to him and steal his thing from him. And then I'd take his vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well. Because usually, I mean, I'll finish what I, my point, I guess, is that often I have seen, and it's somewhat sort of funny, is, like, they, the, the joke is the sort of the trinity of early... Uh, television, like wholesome uncle type oh, I figures. You were back to the. <laughs> we're going right to John Luther or Martin <laughs> Luther, uh, but it, it's usually like Bob Ross, uh, Mr. Rogers, and Steve Irwin, are like the super. I don't 
understand why people put Steve Irwin in that context because he, he I, was he was the way he his personality like that wasn't I the agree, bit that was him. I understand that, but I don't. Maybe I just never had an affinity for him. I, I never know. really. I know I he was. Well, I don't remember when he, when he died. He have died of when I was old enough to remember it happening, but I didn't. I was not like an avid watcher of his before that. I mean, neither was I of any of the others, actually. All of those things were before my time. No, well, I was a Mr. Rogers fan, majorly. But... Uh, see, I would, if I had to pick one of them, I'd pick Bob Ross, just because I've watched the most of his stuff. Yeah, he was good. And they all had similar temperaments, I guess, is what they're getting at. But that's the thing. And I, but this, Jim but, Henson. Yeah, he was very much in that kind Did of he vein. Though? He was a kind of soft-spoken, but also kind of... He had a wit about him. He was quirky, sure. Well, but, I mean, well, I mean, sure, but so is Bob Ross. Well, I again, I'm not saying that that differentiates him. I'm saying the thing that differentiates him, I don't know that I would call him specifically demure or something. I, didn't, sort of. I wouldn't say any of them were demure. That's not what I said about any of them. I said wholesome. Well, yeah. And they all were that, certainly. I mean, Mr. Rogers killed people in Vietnam, so I mean, how... Well, yeah, sure. What, I mean, what, what are you going to argue about? In fact, all of them had a certain degree of... That's what I think people have latched onto, is that each of them... I mean, Steve Irwin most notably as the fact that he literally wrestled alligators for a living. But they were all actually fairly... Manly men. Male, yeah, manly men. It's just that they didn't parade that around. Like, obviously, like Mr. Rogers literally was a... Was he a sniper or something? Something in hardcore in Vietnam. He was Vietnam. like special ops, yeah. It was and then uh, Bob Ross was an Air Force guy. So it's like they all actually were pretty... Yeah, but he was like a high up... Air Force. Yeah, like he was like a drill. Well, they, and that's why like that. the, the the famous story he tells is that he, I think, yeah, he was some kind of a drill instructor. Where his job was to yell at people for a living, so he and he got like, out and was like, "I don't want to do that anymore. I want to. I don't want to have to yell so at anyone else for the rest for the rest of my like life." So it's like fair enough. So there's an element of none of these people were like, "Oh, just squeaky queen." Squeaky, squeaky queens. Squeaky queens. <laughs> Certainly none of them were squeaky queens. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't like altar boy squeaky clean people. But in a way, that's what made them good is that they had the uh, they had the the capacity well, for the for the not the violence exactly. It's... Well, and not even just violence, but like with Jim Henson's case, because I don't think he ever had any kind of history like that. Well, no, but I'm but he had the capacity to to push boundaries. He wasn't a pushover by any well, means. If I could borrow but from he the didn't use that. Him, it's a comprehensive man. Yeah, he didn't use that to, to bully anyone. He just, like, he had it, but he also knew when to use it. And that's... I don't know. So I feel like he deserves to be amongst that canon of, of folk. Maybe. Some people try to put Bill Nye in there, and I might no, have, I might have believed out. you until he became an idiot. Well, no, I wouldn't have believed you even then. He was always a weird... Son of a gun. <laughs> like, I mean, don't get me wrong. He was interesting and fun to watch as a kid, but I would have never put him, even when I was younger, I would have never put him in the same class as somebody like Mr. Rogers. No. Heck no. Wow, tell us how you really feel. No. Bill and I, I can now obviously just safely say is an idiot, and everybody agrees with me, and wow. anybody who doesn't is I, an Well, idiot. and I'd like to point out that I literally have exactly the same qualification to be called a science guy, apparently. Wow! Literally, all he had was a mechanical engineering degree, so I'm like, okay, cool, so I'm the new science guy. <laughs> I am now the boss of science. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, it's like, people made the joke that Dolph Lundgren had more claim to being called a science guy than Bill Nye ever did. <laughs> Well, certainly now that he can't even define genders. <laughs> Dolph Lundgren can. <laughs> Dolph Lundgren knows what a woman is. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> uh, he's not dead, is he? <laughs> well, this episode's going to be fun. I'm already having fun. That's what I'm saying. It's been, it's been it's, un it's un unwinding because we need that after putting out fires, and starting more. <clears throat> uh, this thing ain't gonna die. I'm stuck in a bad dream and it just won't quit. 
Oh, well, now I've got two pistolas. Dos hombres con pistolas! I'm using up all my... Oh, there you go. Can I take his weapons? Is that a thing in this game, too, now? Uh, or is that an old Well, not mechanic, probably from him. Mechanic? You have had it to kill him. Are you talking about a friend or an enemy? Yeah, I'm talking about an enemy. Yeah. Or a, can a friend. Yeah, probably not. This was before the series came into its hey, own. Hey, you, pal. Because that was a you, genius you, idea. Because hey, otherwise they knew that all you were going to hey, do bud. was kill him. Give me that. <laughs> oh, he's... Okay. I think you have to kill more than one for them to turn on you. At least that's true in the other games. Can you... Can I... There's enemies up on top of this little hill. I just watch you die. I, was that... What's my... What's my... What's my burden of care burden in this... Burden of care in this situation? Who's you? What is my responsibility if I just watch him die? Is that... Is that... Well, it's a Batman position. Well, that's true. I don't have to save you. Even though I'm standing right next to you and I could... Uh, well, there was a warthog. Where is that at? When you had a young warthog, I'm gonna take there this he is. here if it's not too Of course it's up. blown up. Oh, okay, yeah. It's blown to bits. Anyway, uh, yeah, Protestantism. Yeah, Protestantism, bad idea. I don't, I think what it became is a bad idea. No. Certainly. The fact, okay, do, the you, fact mean, do you mean immediately? <laughs> well, yeah, I suppose, yeah. The fact that it even became an, and its own name is a problem. I'm just saying what could have been... What could have been an adjustment What could have been Catholic great... Church, well, yeah, exactly oh, no, but here's the thing. He I imagine an alternate timeline in which Martin Luther is remembered as St. Luther the Unifier who brought to, who undid the, the Great Schism. Of, well, yeah. Because think about it. It was 1054... The East and West split. He was just ahead of his time. And then, well, sort of. And then he came it. along in 14 whenever, and he could have been the one to be like, hey, let's let's remember what we once were, and we'll all get back together. I'm... Uh, well, I mean, I think... Uh, Help me, dude. It's a... Uh, it's a... It's a... He's got AIDS. <laughs> um, I'll be there in an um, I think, again, it's the whole context of we take historical figures and we, and we twist and mutilate their, their positions in Ooh, order hello. to, you want to, kick to this guy fit the them to our own will. And it bothers me a lot. Well, but that's well, okay. So that's, so history bothers you, it sounds like. Well, no, I think. Uh, you can't drive on ice. It's not just history. How about ice. About Whoa! It's, okay, no, you can have the you can have the warthog. I know what I'm getting in. Hello, okay. hello, my I baby. Hello, apparently. my honey. Hello. Emotional <laughs> damage. I think that's what I literally just died of. What? <laughs> like, what's happening to me? I don't know. What's happening to me? Um. <coughs> so, no, I think. Like, uh, like I think of even the way that we skirt or, ah, or downplay our, our role in responsibility of how things went down. When? I just kicked you out. Uh, I'm in my tank, so I don't know what you're, who you're kicking out of oh, what. Oh, I kicked out of, uh, I kicked out a different guy, apparently, of the, uh, Squatter. The, what's it called? The, uh, the, uh, the, what are these called? See, if one man tanks could be developed... Why wouldn't you? Because it, well. Ah, okay, well, maybe because that. <laughs> one. Oh no! Well, that would be it, I suppose. Uh, like, uh, like I think of. Um, it's like a, uh, it's like a. Uh, of Sherman, full of one guy. <laughs> he flips it over and explodes. It's cooked. <laughs> it's cooked. Um. I, I'm, I'm, I, I'd drawn a blank. You know, I'm trying to remember a particular person's name because I was. I'm gonna to... die today. Uh, what's his name? That's really annoying. What's his name? What's his name? It's a wonderful name. Oh, I can remember it. Who the hell are you? <laughs> uh, uh, um. Got a teammate in combat. I can't respawn. I'm killing my own teammates, I think, by accident. <laughs> Is it really? 
Or is it a deeply repressed urge? <clears throat> Here's what I don't like in psychological horror. <laughs> Since we're all over the map today. Uh, uh, so are you, apparently, all over the map in a different sense. <laughs> um, I'm not a fan of that notion of, like, ah, oh, there's just the secret repressed er instinct to kill, and it's always bubbling below the surface, and maybe you'll just snap one day, and it's like, that's not interesting. <laughs> I'm referring, I mean, there's several movies that have this as the premise. I'm mostly referring to the film Session 9, which was a massive disappointment. Did you just recently watch this movie? No, actually, I watched it a while back. I watched it, I think, during Halloween of last year. But it was one of those things that a lot of people were like, oh yeah, it's like a quintessential psychological horror. And that's because we talked about how that's what I've been looking for. It's like good psychological horror because otherwise yeah, I'm not... You didn't find it in that movie. No, because it basically, it's like, it's about, it pulls as many cliches as there are. Because it's about, you know, this uh, demolition crew is... Than Bill is, Clinton in the Oval Office. Wow. <laughs> It's this demolition crew is going into this old abandoned asylum and they're cleaning up, you know, asbestos or something like that. And, you know, one of the guys uncovers this uh, oh, log of tapes from this psychological, like, profiling thing about this girl who snapped and killed her family. And it's like, basically, it gets, it boils down to everybody secretly wants to kill someone deep down. And so, and then eventually it ends with one of the guys on the cleaning crew also snaps for just as nonsensical a reason as the woman and starts killing the other crew. And it's like, this is a, this is a premise that I just don't buy because I mean, it's just not psychologically interesting. It's one it's thing. It's also not accurate. <laughs> well, yeah, it makes it out to be like, oh, maybe there, maybe one day you'll get possessed by the murder demon and you'll just <laughs> kill your friends and family. It's like. Well, no, it's actually, it, if anything... That, that dad was hard to kill. If anything, that is that diminishes the psychological impact because the point of the matter is, obviously, the point you're making is that all people are capable of killing Which under the true. certain circumstances. Cap capacity is different than somehow, like, like <laughs> how do I get that murder in me? Yeah, it's like, obviously, anyone is capable under the right circumstances, but to portray it as like, ah, oh, it just happened one day, it came over me. It's like, no, that's not how it happens. It's actually far more... That actually is, I think, negative in that it... Again, it portrays it as something like, oh, it's out of your control, you just have the murder gene. And it's like, well, that's stupid. It's not like that. It's, it's, it's if anything, the war it should be a warning that certain... That anyone is capable of it, so you ought to be cautious about... I'm not sure exactly how to put it, but it's like, it's not just, oh, yep, one day I got possessed by the murder spirit, and I killed someone, and I didn't know what I was doing, because secretly that's lingering within all of us. It's like, no, secretly what lingers in all of us is the fact that you could and would want to under the right circumstances. Right. It isn't something that would just like, ah, it just happened, and I couldn't stop it. I so want to kill that guy suddenly. There's, Why? there's my much, know. there's my much belated review of that film. <laughs> it was lame. Now back to prostitutes. <laughs> now back to. Speaking of mindless murder, prostitutes. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what else is addictive? Prostitutes. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like you're saying prostitutism, and I'm like, yeah. That well, that's probably looks more addictive than <laughs> Protestantism, actually. Uh, no, I think that it's uh, I it just there's so many historic figures that we uh, we appropriate. You keep their saying that. Do you have any others you're angry about? Well, Martin Luther's clearly one of them. I even I resist going, ah! going, or I'm thinking I'm wanting to go because... Okay, Tank should be able to spin on the dot, right, game? it's a little bit... Is it dicey? Yeah. It's going to get more dicey than Martin Luther? I mean, Martin Luther's a pretty spicy one. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to leave it alone. What? I... What historical figure? I mean, even people. Okay, so like, take this whole. About Abe Lincoln. No, I mean, what is it? What is it? Do you feel like he got appropriated? Nothing. For him, was it? I'm just saying. I'm trying to think of who would be a more beloved okay, so figure. Okay, like, that well, not beloved. Well, yes, beloved in certain contexts. 
Uh, what, Karl Marx? I mean, where are you going with this? So, within this whole movement of race and all this... Oh, Martin Luther? Oh, yeah. Or, or the other Martin Luther? No, well, that... King Jr.? Too. Yeah, No, similar. him too. But, but, like, I specifically think of, like, people like Malcolm X, which oh. is like... Have you watched? You should absolutely. I, did you watch the Denzel Washington Malcolm X film? Mm, no. You should because it makes you realize. Oh, we was all wrong. Malcolm no, X was the right one. Not well, in the not the beginning. In the end, though, he was far more correct. How so? Essentially, he was a radical at first for dumb reasons. Well, but that's what. But then he, because of the fact that he was so deeply involved in that radicalism, he essentially became disillusioned with it and was like, oh. This is really this stupid, isn't... and we we're not helping anything. Well, and it's but... like, and he the problem is once he left the radical group, they were the ones who killed him. Well, and then they also then appropriated his position and what he was such a great. Le it's like okay, what? Whereas, That's... but it's like he was so a better see... person than Martin Luther King was. King Jr. You mean? <laughs> yeah. Well, Martin Luther was well, sure. Yeah. I don't know much about his dad. <laughs> but it's like he. In the end, because of course he advocated do dodgy things in the beginning of it, but that was when he was well. A but this is what I'm saying: people take his historical position based on the original context of what, and they're like, "Ah, he had it right. We're gonna get out and you know I mean, make sure that we." Well, and it, see, the thing is, yes, but not the part of it you're thinking. Right, and then here's the thing: then you use in order to f fulfill your own position because it really isn't. Malcolm X's position, nor really was it ever. Even, even when he was an extremist, he wasn't like somebody that was just like, and you know, like just, just senseless violence because we're angry that our, you know, that we've been. Uh, Maybe not senseless violence, but he certainly was interested in. Well, again, I, I'm, uh, I'm. Sensible violence isn't necessarily much better. Well, that sounds. It isn't it though. I mean, again. I mean, I guess it's better than senseless, but it's not the right position. Well, I agree that it neither, and he he would obviously eventually agree that that it wasn't the right position. But all I'm saying is that to to suggest that somebody was somehow, uh, how do you put it? Um, he's become the poster child for an excusable violence in a modern context. For that reason, mm -hmm. as far as race, race relations go, people go, ah, we have a right to be angry and to start getting violent because goodness knows, yeah. oh, because goodness knows, you know, Malcolm X did. And it's like, okay, but no. <laughs> yeah, the fact of the matter is Martin Luther King was not a good person and Malcolm X was... He advocated bad things, but he was actually a better individual. Well, he shot... He was, he was far more... Uh, extreme but he was his... extreme in his speech but he actually correct there's actually a line in the malcolm x film in which obviously he, both he and martin luther king were heavily surveilled by the fbi at the time and so there's a clip of you actually see the fbi guys listening into a wiretap on his phone he's talking he's on the phone with his wife and they're like oh you know compared to compared to king this guy's practically a saint and, I, and having with the, you know, the actual declassified documents of the FBI's investigations into Martin Luther King, you're like, oh, gosh, that's true. Well, yeah, it's like he, a shame. he advocated Sorry, for less than mind. accurate, for less than positive things. But as a personal per in man in his life, it's like, oh, he was actually far better a man right. than Martin Luther King was. Junior, I should say. I keep forgetting. I don't know why I keep maligning his dad. <laughs> His dad's like, hey! Well, he wasn't probably much better. <laughs> well, where are you getting that idea from? I'm just saying. Junior learned it from somewhere. I don't know. Um, now that we've radicalized everyone. Uh, all I'm saying is... Think history, for yourself, everybody. Yes, that and don't act like history is bulletproof fact. Because sometimes it's not. <laughs> I think it's a little unfair to say, oh, history's written by the victors because that's, that's while it's overly true, cynical and it's a exactly. postmodern right. concoction. But at the same time, I don't think it's unfair to say that history has certainly got revision in it. Yeah, but it's not always by the victors. Well, that's true, too. Anyway. Are we done 
baiting uh baiting YouTube sharks. algorithm. <laughs> uh, we're too small for that. I had one there was one time a guy tried to accuse us of baiting the algorithm. What? In the comments, yeah. What, what, what does that even mean? It was back when we were when Did, we didn't give a crap. Was it you making up an account so no. we didn't make it was I. I literally my response was if we knew how to work the algorithm, we probably would have more subscribers. <laughs> what did he say? It was back when I was when I was when I didn't care much. Cheeky. And so we were just recording random. I put I was just putting random gameplay footage of games I was playing over the ones we didn't record anything. Oh okay. And just because I was like I wanted some kind of visual thing, and I was like, ah, oh, this doesn't match what the thing is, and it's a thumbnail, and you're just using this for clickbait, and I was like. Dude, if we knew how to manipulate the algorithm like that, we'd probably not be where we are. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, whoever you are, if you're still listening, which I doubt. But if you are, hey. Yeah, well, hey, good for you. I mean, I don't know why. It's probably not if good you, for you. If you know how to manipulate the algorithm, get in touch. <laughs> Oi! I mean, I know how to manipulate the algorithm. The problem is neither of us are women. <laughs> <laughs> I could certainly wear revealing clothing, but I think that would hinder our chances. <laughs> oh, ah! Well, you, you know. You ran me down. You blew really, me it would only, off you. Really, it would only be me that I that would that would reap the benefits of that. Well, then we might start to appealing to a whole different audience. <laughs> okay. Um... Let's talk about I don't know what. What's what's, what's your thoughts on on uh, liquor that's not actually liquor? What? <laughs> like you should this, know my thoughts on things that pretend to be whole, things they aren't. Well, that maybe I suppose is. Not that's just my general uh, like. That's no. my life thesis is my hatred of things that pretend to be things they aren't. Uh, this is more. Have I have, I, have I ranted to you about vinyl countertops? I ranted to no, Dad about vinyl but, countertops. But give me a moment, and then you can rant about vinyl countertops. I'm curious about what your rant might be about this, about the whole I don't like things that aren't movement what they are. of uh, of uh, non-alcoholic alcohol, like spirits. Well, it's the same to me as vaping. Is like, it like just smoke? <laughs> you think so, huh? It's a I little mean, bit like that because sense here's the thing: for people that are alcoholics yeah, but, that are like, ah, I'm trying to quit, but yeah, but see, even then, well, okay, fair enough, because that's what vapes were originally for. But the problem is, people who didn't smoke who start vaping because they think it's like a healthy version of smoking. I'm like, you are so far from the target audience for this. And of course, the problem is, well, so I suppose that's the, the, con that the is companies the that made these things very quickly pivoted to be like, oh, we're not, our market isn't. People who are recovering smokers, our market is eighteen-year-old idiots. Well, and, and they that, were they were just content to make that change. I'm so like, I you think guys the same is true for for non-alcoholic alcohol or spirits, or you want to call it, is that people that go, ah, I'm trying to quit, but I like the flavor. It's like, okay, you may have an argument, although anybody that They're, actually drinks start is drinking gonna... tea or coffee or anything else, just get into something else. Sure. I suppose that's an argument. Because that's actually a advice from, of all things, it's from Let's Drown Out. Because the uh, Gabe on that use is, is very open about having been like a former alcoholic, and he's like, the thing is, you just have to find a different hobby. Because the thing you, is, you don't you do people don't recognize it. Yeah. People don't recognize it, but basically, booze is your hobby. Well, and the problem yeah. is, you're trying to cut. Kind of you're trying like, to quit, which means now you don't have a hobby. Commentary. Well, it is, but he's but that's the honest commentary. He's like, so you need to replace that with something else. He's like, get into fitness. Or in or into some kind of other, you know, some kind of hobby, and that gets you. I mean, a gets you in a healthier lifestyle, but also just something else that you can put your mind on. Right. So it's like if you're like, oh, I just really like the flavor of booze, and I can't give it up for that reason. I'm like, okay, just get into get really into tea. Well, Experiment also, with it a lot. Find the ones you like and get really kind of nutty about it. And it also... And he makes a joke. It's like, it's fine to get obsessive about something in the early stage because you you need something that you can obsess over that isn't booze. Right. So do that. And I was like, I appreciate his honesty on this because, I mean, A, he knows, and he is very flippant about it. It's like, no, you have to, you have to recognize these things, this whole sad commentary. It's like, well, it is, but you're not going to change unless you realize where you are. Yeah. So, I don't know. That's my advice is get into tea or coffee or, I don't know, kombucha. So, 
Ooh, kombucha is hardly a good alternative. I don't even know what it is, to be honest. It's still alcoholic to some degree. Is it? It is. I just thought it was a weird hipster drink. To anybody that drinks kombucha and says it's not, help is out there. It's fermented, so it technically is. Well, technically, so is kimchi. That doesn't make it booze. Well, what okay. happened to him? I tore his innards out and put him back in. <laughs> put him back in sideways. <laughs> uh. Anyway, I was just curious about what your thoughts are with that. Well, so here's my thoughts to... on vinyl countertops. Yeah, there you go. Same thing as vinyl countertops. Well, it is. I dislike Put them in the freezer. I dislike anything that that pretends to be what it isn't. This includes products just... or people, actually. <laughs> but mainly, mainly people. Because here's the thing. Mainly a people. A vinyl countertop always pretends to be something else. There isn't just, yeah, here's a sheet of featureless white plastic countertop. Hmm. It's, oh, here's vinyl countertop and it looks like marble. But so of course, if you put like a hot mimicry. thing on it, it'll melt and you can't, you know, you can't just use it as like a prep station or, or any, of the, any of the benefits you would get from various forms of countertoppery. It's so just is, a fake. Is mimicry always bad in your opinion? I'm, I don't see any reason why it wouldn't be because it's a little bit of, I take the Play-Doh position of be as you wish to seem. It's like, if you want to have a vinyl, if you want to have a fancy countertop, have a fancy countertop. If you can't afford a fancy countertop, own that and buy the nicest countertop you can afford. And people think, well, but I want to seem upper class. I want the quartz countertop, but I can't afford it. So I have so this fake quartz. So to you, it's equivalent of like, uh, uh, what is it called? Um, well, it's commercialism, I guess, if I had to uh, specify. Yeah, but it's... Uh, it's basically, it's, I don't want to accept that I can't afford these things, so I'm going to pretend like that I have them. It's like homage watches. I don't know what that what you mean by that specifically. Like homage or what do you want to Is this call a it? brand or are you talking about no, watches homage, that look like, like other watches? Yeah, exactly. Well, like it's you're like talking homage. about like in the Chinese sense or just Yeah, like okay, uh, this Chinese company is going to make a yeah, well, version of a watch that looks like a Rolex but it's not one and you just go just don't Yeah, no. it's dumb. I'm essentially of the opinion that you should that that which you can't afford you don't deserve and that people are going to think, "Oh, you're just some terrible you know, Victorian era classes, and thing. I'm like, I'm if poor. You, if you like, I apply this to myself. If you like a particular style, it's not even like, for instance, if it's like, oh, I like this particular model of Rolex because it looks like this. Okay, then find a different brand that actually comfortably owns its own branding, and says, yeah, we're not a Rolex. We just like this particular look. Great. But if you're trying to actually make it look like and fool people into thinking it's a Rolex, that's stupid. Yeah. So basically, I just don't like things that fake stuff. Yeah. And, and I, I don't know why it's vinyl countertops specifically. I think it's just because it's not even vinyl countertops. It was because at the house we're currently in, there was a whole debacle about how we have fake quartz countertops, which can't be used in the way quartz countertops are meant to be used. So it's like you can't put anything hot on them. Because otherwise the quartz will yeah, like, but isn't the, that because the, the, the weird resin that it's screwed made of, the pooch? Yeah, the that? guy. We, we, it should have been real quartz, and it wasn't. We had a whole settlement about it. But anyways, oh, they actually had yeah. a thing about yeah, it. Yeah, the guy. The guy paid for it. He's like, because they charged for real quartz. But well, actually, no, I don't think they charged for real quartz. They charged for something else that was. I'm not. That's not even my. It was point. like reclaimed nonsense. Yeah, but my point is. What's the benefits of a quartz countertop? Is it that it looks a certain way, or is that it form performs a certain function? Well, which that's is another question within itself. Is like there are certain things that are actually on a utilitarian level different. Because like you could also just get you thing, could just get a concrete countertop, and guess what? You can put hot stuff on it, and you don't have to worry about it melting. Right. You can. It's it doesn't have any of the finicky like it has to be touched up with this kind of uh, like weird treatment stuff. And there's. I just don't like things that pretend to be what they aren't. Because you could say, you know what, I'm too poor to afford a fancy countertop, so I we have this, you know, basically it's just a giant, like, butcher block, and those don't cost much. And I would just go, I would rather have that than a fake quartz countertop that I can't put hot stuff on and I can't do any prep work on because it'll stain. It's like, I would rather the cheap thing that is what it is right. than, the, than the expensive or... Well, the whole idea of luxury quasi expensive. Is, I mean, it's more expensive than the cheap thing, but it it pretends to be something much nicer. It's like, but it isn't. This is where who are you fooling? Exactly. This You're not is fooling where I yourself. Think the the idea of of uh, uh, upper class culture in a modern context bothers me, 
because it used to be that luxury was something where well, you go... it used go, to be that luxury was a sign of actual wealth, whereas nowadays luxury is just well, a sign of luxury was like, hey, this still has its... and maintains its utility, but is now just a, a dearer, you know, either material or it's like a dearer, like, but maybe the there's thing, more attention that, to detail in there's it There's also whatever. the element that says, okay, I can't afford a nice car, so I'm going to get a payment on a nice car. And I'll be stuck in debt for the rest of my life. Right. It's paying a, off this nice car so that I can look like I'm rich when I'm not. Correct. It's like it's putting that, on air. And yeah, a, basically that's what sense. it all comes down to is why do you have a fake quartz countertop? Because I like the look of it. Not because it functions as a quartz countertop, obviously, because it doesn't. You can't use it the way you can use well, a quartz and countertop. and this kind of goes to our argument. So you're just yesterday. doing it because you want it to look like quartz. The other day, And though, I guess we you could make the argument, the well, it's aesthetic. I like the look function, of quartz. That whole thing. I actually don't think there's anything wrong with making aesthetic choices. Right. You and I had talked but about that. But there's also, if you... Aesthetic... Uh, this is where it gets difficult to yeah, draw that's that what line. I'm saying. It's like, hmm. There is something about saying, okay... You could, I suppose, say, you know what, I don't, I like the look of quartz, but I don't care that it performs the same as quartz, so I bought the fake quartz. And I'm like, there is still something about that to me that is bothersome. I'm not exactly sure why. I guess because the even the aesthetic is robbed. Sure. It's like, it's not even, it's like, okay, yeah, you could also put a piece of wood and paint it like quartz if you cared, if you really were that committed. So it, it's... It's a little bit of the... Th I'm of the opinion... It's a. It's similar to the concept of the, the manufactured diamonds, where it's like, yeah, they might be in undetectable, but you would know when there's, you buy it. There, I was about to say, they're Therefore, still you're gonna... You're gonna know that you have a fake diamond, even though you might think, well, aesthetically speaking, it's the same. And well, people's argument care. is it's not fake. It's like, well, but it's not certainly gen not genuine. Well, I mean, that's actually a perfect to, example. Where are we supposed to because go? Because in working in that industry, what you you're able to break down is why is a diamond valuable? It's, it's because hard to get. exactly, it's because it's rare. So, and it's not Everything it's naturally gold. occurring, you know, thing that like happens. And when it's that big or it's that particularly clear or whatever, it's more rare. Great. When you manufacture one. Well, it's like pearls it's are the same thing. Right. It loses all of its its uh, dearness <clears throat> because of the fact that you go, this is completely. And some people would say, well, that's just because you're elite and you think only the rich should be able to have nice things. And I'm a little bit like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I am genuinely like that. And people would say, well, I'm not, I'm not rich. So it's not like I'm advocating for my own position. Right. It's like no, I just think that you don't you don't deserve things you can't afford. If you can't afford it, you can't have it. And the idea that says I'm going to fake better having off. it. Yeah, we would be far better off if people actually lived that way. Well, it's just a matter of the ancient wisdom is to live within your means and no one's done that for 100 years. Yeah, exactly. We buy a pay you have a payment on your you lease your furniture so that you can pretend like you got nice stuff. That's a like joke. People that do that, I'm like, I do not understand you at all. Just like this guy who just needled my bones. He you boned your needle? Uh, no, that he did not do. I'm pretty sure it's the same way around if he needled your bone. I said bones with an S. Did he? <laughs> did he pickle your sausage? Is the question. <laughs> no. <laughs> Oh dear. Uh, I think we've been in here. I don't know where we're going. I'm running you over though. Oh, good try. Missed you. Strafing for the win. Going up the wall. Well. Strafe to the wall. Any other uh, Protestantism and fake vinyl? And AIDS. <laughs> and AIDS. Things that are, aren't what they are. That's the crux of it. Because I've been also talking about this. I talked about... Uh, I forget what the other context was. It, there's just something about... It extends to all things. Like, I just... And here, I mean, obviously I have a bias for being... Because of the fact that I do... I, I am a drummer. And I naturally would hate electric drum sets. Yeah. Because every drummer does. But... It's, you know, in the modern day, there's there's electric drum sets that are good enough that you wouldn't necessarily be able to tell. But I don't Especially care. Especially on recording, yeah. But I don't care because it's like, but it isn't the it isn't what it is. And well, but what about I've had people guitar, try to make the argument. Though, it's like, yeah, well, like, a guitar is, you know, especially if you, if you use these effects, then 
technically the sound you're getting out of it isn't actually what's coming out of the guitar because it's been processed. And I'm like, you make a good point. That's the thing that also I find funny is, I mean, this changing the subject slightly is the fact that there is such a, a, uh, what's the word? There is such a, can't think of it. There is a dearth. That's the word. There is such a dearth of debate acumen in the modern day that people think that that kind of a, a, a whataboutism will change my mind. Because I have been in the past. I own several digital guitar stuff. And I am not like a hardcore analog person when it comes to guitar effects. Well, but So then they were trying to be like, well, what about guitars? It's the same thing. And I was like, you're right. You make it. It's like, and it's almost like that, uh, that the ability to be consistent in one's logical opinions surprises people. It's like, oh, you've, equi- you've, you've equated my current point to a different point that I had previously thought was opposite. I'm going to hold the same logic, which means, yes, you've convinced me on the other thing. I now have more respect for analog guitar effects because of the fact that I hate <laughs> fake drum set so much. Because I guess you're right in drawing the comparison that a, that a digital effect is not unlike what's done to make uh, fake drum sets. So it's like, okay, sure, fair enough. I think there is slightly more room in that. Whereas an electric guitar is like an electric drum set does not use because a a digital effect on a guitar is taking what the guitar is inputting and adding to it a digital effect. So technically, what you get out is a mixture. Well, and the rather than a fake drum set is you smack a thing and a computer makes a noise, so the whole thing is fake. Right. So I would I would make a I'd quibble that they're slightly different in that one is sort of a, a hybrid reality. The other one is total fake. And I would prefer the hybrid to the total fake. But if I'm going to be logically consistent, then yeah, I suppose there's something to be said for analog effects. Fair enough. I'll look into them more. People go... <laughs> yeah, it is funny how people are like, oh, you're being logically consistent. I thought I just went up to you. And I'm like, no. Because they think that going, well, you hold this previously held opinion, which means... If I bring that to bear on this current circumstance, you'll like go, oh, well, then I guess my I can't acknowledge my logic because I certainly won't change my mind. I'm like, no, I'll change my mind for the sake of logic. That's the whole point of logic. We're wandering around doing nothing. That's also the whole point of cognitive dissonance. Like people go, oh, you can't ever have that. It's like, well, no, it's not that you can't have it. It's that when it and what do you do when it comes up? Exactly. What happens? Do you change or do you double down? I don't know where we're supposed to go, because I would have thought this interior building that we've been in a couple times was something, but it isn't. 